So we have the history table, which is empty. We want to have all the items that have changed in this table, okay? So if I go to list of items, I have three items, all right? We have Samsung, Apple, and Oppo. So let's say we issue an item, Apple, and we issue 60, click save. So if I go to the history, I should see that this item was issued and this was the issue quantity, right? And it was issued by my user account. And this was the time that it was issued. So if I do a receive, I'm gonna click receive and I'm gonna receive 20 items. And I click save. If I go to the history, the quantity is now 123. The receive quantity was 20 and I was the one that received this item. So this is what we're gonna do in this video. If you're not a subscriber and you enjoy videos like this, you might consider subscribing so that you will not miss our future videos. Okay, we have all the codes and we're gonna follow it step by step. The first step is to create a model. We wanna replicate our stock model. Like if I go to the models of py, so I have this model file. I want to replicate this. So I'm gonna make a similar model as the stock model, okay? So that's what I created here. I'm gonna copy it. And paste it in models of py. Okay, so now I'm gonna name this stock history and we're setting all the fields to null true and blank true likewise the auto now add and auto now as false including the null true okay so once we get this we're gonna do save and then make migration and migrate And then we migrate. Okay, so we're gonna move to the next step. And in this step, that is step number three, we're gonna go to MySQL Management Studio. I'm using Workbench. You can use any of the management studio that you have. So what we want to do there is to create a trigger. So I'm gonna open Workbench. enter my password I'm gonna scroll down to the stock management database and expand the tables all right so we have the newly created table right here the stock history table all right so I'm gonna right click it let me scroll that up a bit I'm gonna right click it and then click all the table so now if you look at this table I'm gonna expand that a bit All right, so I don't want to have the PK not null and the auto increment for the ID field because we are going to use these fields to keep a record of another table. OK, so I'm going to remove all these checkboxes and then click save or apply and then click apply again. All right, we're going to click close now. OK, so I'm going to close this. The next step is to create a trigger and now what is a trigger this will be used to copy the content of our stock table into the stock history table like if i open models of py file we have two tables we have stock table we have stock history table so now what we want to do is anytime an item is updated in this table we want to copy the content of that update into this table okay so we're gonna use trigger to do that okay now if I switch over to the code I'm gonna copy this paste it in the workbench and I will explain what is going on here now if you want to have a blank query page you're gonna click on this SQL icon okay so we're gonna paste it right here now I'm gonna scroll up and explain the script so now this is gonna create our trigger for us okay the trigger will have this name I'm gonna explain why I gave it this name but now after update on 
this table that is the stock MGMT stock table this table that we have here the reason why we have stock MGMT underscore stock is this how Django names its tables okay so it's the Django naming convention it will take the name of the app underscore the model name all right so that's what we have here okay so after update on this table we want to write the content the newly inputted content into these fields okay so this is the new information that is being inputted in the table the stock mgmt table okay so we want to take the content of that and then fill it inside these fields okay so that is if we update any item in this table so that's the reason we gave this name after this table is updated do this all right but we're gonna have a condition right here if the new not issue quantity is equals to zero so now if i am doing receive i will set the issue quantity to zero we're gonna do that shortly i'm gonna update our views okay and then come back to the script so let's move to the views.py so for issue item and receive item we're gonna do this okay immediately after form.save commit equals to false i'm gonna do this instance dot issue quantity is equals to zero All right so when i'm doing issuing i'm gonna set the receive quantity to zero okay if i'm doing issuing i want to set the receive quantity to zero and if i'm doing receiving i want to set the issue quantity to zero all right so it's just the opposite of what we have here so just after the farm.save i'm gonna set the issue quantity to zero so the reason why i'm doing this is if i switch over to the script so since if we are doing receiving the issue quantity will be zero then we can run this script okay and if we are doing issuing the receive quantity will be zero then if that condition is met this script will be run all right so now what is this script doing when we are receiving and if the issue quantity is zero we're gonna insert into this table the newly created table our stock history table we're gonna insert into it the new values that we just updated okay so we're gonna insert all these values into these fields okay so we're gonna insert the id of the item the last updated the category id item name quantity receive quantity and receive by all right so when issuing and that will set our receive quantity to zero we're gonna take all these values and then put them in these fields for this table so i'm gonna run this code and then move to the next step so i'm gonna click on this execute button and then confirm that it is executed okay so i'm gonna run it again just to confirm that we don't have an error all right so before we move to the next step i'm gonna explain what we have up here so we are setting the delimiter by default the delimiter is set to semicolon all right so since we're gonna use a lot of semicolons in our code we're gonna temporarily set the delimiter to this so that means our code will be seen as one big script all right so when we set the delimiter to this we're gonna be able to use the semicolons within our script and then set it back to the default delimiter all right so since we have uh, our script beginning from here and ending here okay so and we change the delimiter to double forward slash we're gonna run the entire code as one big script okay the next line is drop trigger if it exists so we're gonna drop this trigger name if it exists so that means if we have an older script okay or older trigger with the same name is gonna drop it and then recreate it here and then now have these conditions applied to that trigger 
All right, so we're gonna move to the next step, which is to create the view. So I'm gonna copy this and paste it in views.py. All right, so we're gonna create a list history view, and that will list out all the updated items in this stock history table. All right, so I'm gonna save it and then switch over to the next step. So in step number six, we want to create a list history template. So I'm going to copy this, right click, copy, and I'm going to make a copy of list items and then save it as list history. Replace the table with the code that I just copied from div all the way up to div okay so I'm gonna remove the form for now and then save it okay so we can now move to step number seven and then create a URL and URLs.py Okay, so we're gonna have this history as the URL and then create a button for it. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this and then paste it in navbar.html. So right after the add items, I'm gonna paste it here. Save it, save the URL and then refresh the app and then click list history. All right, so at the moment our list of history is empty, right? So we're gonna do some history and receive and see that the item is coming up on this screen. So I'm gonna go to list of items and then receive the device Samsung. I'm gonna receive, let's say 60 like this, and then click save. All right, so let's click list history. So we can see we have one item in this table. So remember this table is pulling the items from the stock history table okay and if we move over to the database if I do a query on this table if I do right click and then select row you can see we have one item in this table so the trigger is working fine okay so it's taking the content of what has changed into this new table so I'm gonna do a few more receives and issues okay so if I go to list history you can see we have the category the item name is not coming but we have to look at that so we have the quantity the issue quality receive quality and the last updated all right so now i'm gonna check why this item name is not coming up so in the history list of history we're gonna check uh the name item name all right so right here we have an error i'm gonna remove that save it and then refresh okay so the item name is popping up all right, so we don't want to see these nones, okay? So the reason why it's coming none is we're going to copy the content of that field into this new field, okay? So this is how we fix that. I'm going to go back to the trigger. Okay, so if you look at it, if you're doing the receive, that is if the issue amount or the issue quantity is zero, we're just copying these fields, all right? So this field, the is a quantity is not copied into this table so I'm gonna add that so right here right after the name I'm gonna add issue underscore quantity comma issue by comma and then in the next statement if we're doing issue we want to add the receive quantity and a receive by 
I'm going to run this code again. All right, so this is why we need this line right here. Drop trigger if exists. Since we run it previously and we are running it again, it's going to delete the previous one and then update it with this new script. So I'm going to switch over and then do some issue on receive. Column count doesn't match the value at row one. Okay, so this is a MySQL error. So if we switch over to the trigger, we have added the columns right here, but it's not added in the value sets. Okay, so since we added the issue quantity, the issue by, we have to add it here as well. Okay, so I'm gonna add issue quantity, and it has to be new that issue quantity and new dot issue by okay so we're gonna scroll down and then do the same for the receive quantity and receive by new dot receive quantity and new dot receive by run it again and then refresh the screen okay so the error is gone so let's switch over to the history this time you can see we have the zero coming up right here okay for this item so i'm gonna do a receive again for another item do an issue Okay, and then click history again so you can see this time we are having zeros I'm gonna do a receive and we should expect a zero on the issue quantity all right when we do a receive all right so I'm gonna do a receive again for this item save so we should expect to see zero at the okay so something is wrong with our code it's not capturing our receives okay so this is most likely on the views so we're gonna go check the views so if we are issuing items it records that perfectly well okay so we only have issues when we're doing receives okay so I'm gonna check the receive view that is right here so with receive view we should have the all right so we have an error right here we should have issue quantity not receive quantity okay issue quantity to zero when we're doing receiving all right so let's test that again so for the same device i'm gonna do receive again receive this item receive 60 click save and then check the history again okay this time we have the zero coming up at this section and then the 60 right here and then the quantity also is updating all right so next is to grab the username of the person doing this process we want to add issue by and receive by on this table so I'm gonna add two extra columns on the list history template so i'm gonna add receive by and issue by save and refresh the screen all right so at this section we have none for all of this okay so on the database we have these two columns the issue by and receive by okay but if you look at our code it's not capturing that in the views.py so when doing receive of an item we want to grab the username of 
the login user okay so we can do that like this instance dot receive by is equals to request dot user okay so I'm gonna do the same for the issue instant dot issue by request dot user so if I save it and then head over here try to test that list of items do an issue okay so we have a simple lazy object user my username so we have this error because we're trying to save an object into a string okay a field that receives that expect a string so we need to convert this to a string and here as well save it and then refresh on the screen click continue okay so I'm gonna head over to the list history scroll down you can see I have my username right here all right so I'm gonna do and uh, this time we're gonna do receive and we expect to see our username under receive section or on the receive column I'm gonna click another device maybe this one click receive okay so I'm gonna head back to the history and you can see I have my username right here all right, so I'm gonna do an issue for this same device and see what will happen. Okay, so if I head back to the list history, you can see I have my name on both the issue and receive. So I don't want this to happen. And the reason why this is happening is we already have my name in the database for that item under the receive column and now when I do the issue it copies my name again right here so to prevent this from happening we can go back to our trigger so when we are doing receive that is on this script we want to leave the issue by blank so I'm gonna remove issue by okay and remove it here as well and when we're doing issuing we don't want to capture receive by okay so I'm gonna remove that and then run the code again all right so let's test it again for the same device or poll I'm gonna go and then do an issue and then receive Oh, we always forget to update the new column all right so I'm gonna remove um, receive by in this case let's check if we do the same for the upper one okay so we run the script again and then refresh the screen all right then I'm gonna do a receive and then head over to the history so in this case you can see we have none right here and none right there so this has been a long one but I hope you enjoyed the video subscribe if you want to see more content like this see you in the next video